growing up, I think I always liked the guys that played a lot of solos and stuff like that. But as I matured a little bit more, I was more influenced by guitar players that were more about writing songs. And um, so it wasn't so much about soloing or you know wanking off. It was more about being a good songwriter and writing good melodies. And so, so guitar players like Michael Shanker and the guys from Iron Maiden, um, Brian May from Queen, guitar players like this were always uh, inspirational to me in terms of like my own songwriting and style. Um, sometimes, you know, sometimes I'll be caught up in the moment. Um, it's really nice when we do that song and there's a big crowd and they sing the, the chorus with, uh, with us and that kind of makes me um, you know, sad, but also happy that, that they feel the, the emotions that the song is really trying to betray. Um, my father passed away when I was really young, and that song basically was sort of a way for me to, to uh, help deal with the, the feelings of, of that, you know? Um, so sometimes it's, it's a little bit sad to do, but then at other times it's, it's also like a, a really beautiful moment, you know, to share with the fans. I think it's important that, you know, even when I meet uh, people that I idolized growing up now, like yesterday we were hanging out with the guys from Queensryche and they were like huge influence on us and everybody, they're just really nice people and I think it's just easy to remember what you could be doing if you weren't playing music or something that you um, should feel very fortunate and stay humble with that. Um, I think that always keeps me grounded knowing that uh, how fortunate and lucky that we are to be able to do this as a career. started touring um, it was actually really exciting I mean it was our the band actually never really toured before we got a record deal which is kind of a funny thing because we had all these friends and everybody was like gigging and um, so we never really toured that much and then we got this offer to do this festival in Germany and from then on we just started touring non-stop but the tours in the beginning were everything was new to us so it was very exciting you know it was like a whole refrigerator full of beer every night for everybody that wanted to drink and uh, we were excited if there was 300 people at the shows but you know and since then it's it's grown and grown but yeah I have like, only fond memories of those early early tours I think one of the ways that we're able to continue to write unique and hopefully special music is that in between each record I don't really listen to a whole lot of other bands and I always try to find like new influences from new age music to classical to any kind of ethnic things you know we travel so much now that it's really cool to be able to get a lot of different influences and um, we really work pretty hard at not copying ourselves but maintaining a certain sound, a Camelot sound that that the fans expect and that we, you know, we feel is crucial to to our style. Um, so we don't we don't want to repeat ourselves. We never want to do that. We would rather put out a record that somebody might hate than to just repeat ourselves with the the same album, the cookie cutter, follow the formula type thing. I mean and the new record We've done, we've experimented a little bit more than maybe you, you normally would have, and I think it's exciting. It's exciting for us as artists, and I think for the fans, um, it's exciting, you know, to hear these new elements, hear something different. Maybe Roy singing a, a vocal melody that is not typical for Camelot, but it's somehow it works because we're able to sort of fuse different types of music within this structure that we call Camelot, you know, and the bands that I grew up on loving, like 
Led Zeppelin, Queen, those kind of bands, they had all different types of music in their rock, you know, style. And that's one of the things that when I started the band, I wanted to be able to do that and not have this, oh, we can only do metal with this type of uh, scales, etc. So that's really a, a crucial part, I think, to Camelot's style. And one of the things that keeps me interested in, in, in writing and, and continuing, you know. Yeah, like when we go, when we're taking an album and we're preparing for a tour and we pick the songs that we want for, that we're going to have, you know, on tour. You know, even when we're writing the songs, we think about breaks and parts in the song that are going to be really, really cool for live. And the cool thing about it is it's always heavier. It's always, you know, fatter on the stage. It's always a, one of the cool things about Camelot, I think, with, um, you know, the band is that we bring this extra energy from the record and we just take it to another level on, on, on the stage. And I'm very fortunate to have musicians, you know, in this band that that understand that the kids and the people that go to the shows, they spend their hard-earned money to see us. And we give, like, everything we can on the stage to interpret those songs from the record. Change them sometimes just for for fun or change it to, to make it more dynamic. So those kind of things are actually exciting. That actually makes the studio part of it, which I really don't like, sitting there uh, for hours to getting the parts perfect. Um, that kind of makes the work in the studio pay off, you know, when you know you're going to be able to play that song live and, and bring a, a whole different vibe and soul to it. Um, so yeah, that's kind of our, I think that's one of our philosophies to, to tour. Yeah, regrets, I mean, there's always things you could say, you look back and go, oh, I wish I would have done this or that, or, um, you know, like, spending more time with, uh, like, my mom just recently passed away, I, I wish I would have spent more time with her, you know. But those kind of things, if you dwell on it too much, it'll eat you up, you know. And you just got to think, okay, this is this is the path that we've chosen. These are the way that things have happened for us. And we, at the time, whenever you make a decision, that must have been the right thing to do at that time. Otherwise, you never know what you might be doing. You might be an architect or whatever. So. You can't really have regrets. It's always it's always good to look back and at decisions that you made and learn from them, which I try to do as much as possible. I try not to make bad decisions to begin with, but if I do, I try to learn from them and say, okay, I'm not going to do that again. If this situation happens, I'm going to do something different, you know. So um, you really can't have regrets in life. You got to just go keep going forward. Things happen a certain way. Just make the best of it. Well, the future for Camelot, I see growing more than ever. I mean, for us, I still feel like this is the new band. I mean, every every day things are changing, things are growing. I meet new fans, younger fans, and it's inspiring. You know, it's just. Uh, and we're not, we're not tired of it, you know? Once we get tired of it, we'll quit. But right now, we love what we do. We love creating the music. We love touring. Maybe we don't love doing interviews all the time, but other than that, I mean, the, the band is still growing. It's still going up. And all I see is bigger and better things for Camelot. <laughs>